How are we doing today, Las Vegas? First of all, thank you to all the people who waited in line to get in, to show your love for this country, your excitement about this campaign, and your determination to take back America for the citizens of this country. So thank you to all of you. Very rarely in history do people get the opportunity to vote for true, real, profound change. I would venture to say this is an opportunity that's not even just once in a lifetime opportunity. This is the kind of opportunity that only comes once in many hundreds of years. And it's important, it's crucially important that every morning we wake up, we're cognizant of just how historic and how rare this opportunity is. Because folks, it's not going to come again. I mean, we have been betrayed and let down by politicians year after year after year after year after year. And you hear the same promises, oh, well, we're going to secure the border. Does the border ever get secured, folks? No. no. They say, oh, well, we're going to bring back our manufacturing jobs, but do those jobs ever come back? No. They say they're going to clean up D.C. and kick out the special interests. Do the special interests ever go? No. After eight years of Obama, the special interests are more powerful than ever. The gap between the rich and poor is wider than ever. The control of Wall Street is greater than ever. And the ability of everyday people to control their own affairs is less than it has ever been. When we talk about the American dream dying, when we talk about the American dream disappearing, what we're talking about is the fact that people in this own country are stuck. They can't find a job, they can't find a raise, they can't afford health care, they can't have a safe community, they can't be secure from terrorism. The infrastructure is crumbling, the airports don't work. Our political system sells favors to the highest bidder. And no one in this country, folks, has done more to sell out our government to the highest bidder than Hillary Rodham Clinton. And, and when you think about it, folks, one of the great, great ironies of this race is that in the year of Bernie Sanders in the Democratic primary, because of the superdelegates, they went ahead and nominated the face of special interest corruption in America. Nobody has taken more money from special interests in return for more favors than Hillary Clinton. The examples go on forever. And one of the things that Mr. Trump has talked about and you probably heard about, is Hillary Clinton has taken millions and millions and millions of dollars, and her husband, from some of the most oppressive, violent, brutal regimes on the face of the earth. And if we, if we as a country, want to stand up for our values, if we want to support the rights of women, the rights of minorities, the rights of gay and lesbian Americans, then we have to say no to Hillary Clinton and the foreign governments funding her. She takes money. She takes money from Saudi Arabia. She takes money from Qatar. She takes money from the United Arab Emirates. She takes money from Brunei. She takes money from countries where women are enslaved and gay and lesbians are put to death where it is a capital punishment to be gay in the countries where she takes her money from. Folks, that is disgraceful. And it's time Hillary Clinton apologized to the millions upon millions of people suffering in those regimes that she is lifting up by giving them the blessing of taking their money. When a major official in our government takes millions of dollars and also in some cases personal gifts from oppressive regimes, they are sanctioning indirectly, but they're sanctioning just the same, the atrocious behavior of those regimes. And it's time Hillary Clinton was condemned for doing so. I think all of us are tired of taking morality lectures from somebody who accepts money from the most corrupt regimes in some cases, and the most violent regimes in some cases, and the most oppressive regimes in some cases, on the face of the earth. I don't want to be lectured by somebody who's happily willing to sell favors from the U.S. government in exchange for cash. 
And I'm willing to venture, I'm willing to venture that the people of the United States of America, when they learn about the extent of this corrupt dealing, when they learn about how much money Hillary Clinton has taken from regimes with blood in their hands, when they learn about that, they will say the United States of America will never put someone that corrupt into the White House. The leader of the free world, the symbol of democracy and human rights across the world is the United States. And the United States will not choose as its leader somebody who sanctions brutality against women, brutality against gays, brutality against Jews and Christians and everybody else. We are going to elect somebody who stands for and fights for the rights of all people, and that man is Donald J. Trump. And folks, another issue, another issue we get lectured on all the time. Oh man, do we get lectured on this. You can't turn on the TV or pick up your newspaper without getting a sanctimonious lecture on this issue. And that's the issue of immigration security. And Hillary Clinton says, well, well, we can't have a secure border and we can't enforce our laws. Because if we did that, it would tear apart families, Hillary Clinton says. The families being torn apart are the American families who are losing loved ones to an open border. And nobody can run for president of the United States who is not willing to protect American families. That is a pretty fundamental qualification. If you can't stand up and say, I will protect the safety and security of American families, then you are running for the wrong job. And I submit to you folks, the American people will never elect someone like Hillary Clinton who has pledged to dissolve the borders around these United States. No country, no country will ever elect a president who will dissolve its own borders, and that's what Hillary Clinton has promised to do. Hillary Clinton has also promised a 550% increase in Syrian refugees. Now, once again, once again, Hillary Clinton tells us, well, this is the compassionate thing to do. You know what compassionate behavior would be? Would be using the money to help 10 times as many refugees in their home region. What Hillary Clinton doesn't tell you is that for every dollar you spend bringing a refugee out of Syria into the United States and providing housing, providing medical services, providing jobs, providing welfare, feeding, housing, clothing, refugees, for every one you bring into the United States, you could help 11 in their home region. Hillary Clinton is denying support. She is denying support to hundreds of thousands of refugees for the sake of her selfish and corrupt political agenda. And there's another group of people, folks, that are getting left out of this conversation. They're called American citizens. Our inner cities are falling apart. Our rural communities are falling behind. Our children are underemployed. Every penny that is being spent on the resettlement operation is a penny taken out of the pocket of hardworking Americans and their children. We are $19 trillion in debt. We do not have the money for Hillary Clinton's plan to resettle huge portions of the Middle East inside the United States of America. We need to support our American family first. That includes, that includes millions upon millions of Americans living in poverty today. The social contract that makes this country or any country work is that the people like you, the backbone, the heart, the soul, the essence of this country, who go to work every day, who love their children and take care of their families, who follow the rules, the people who make this country move, the people who go, our social contract is that you follow the rules, you do your civic duty, and in return, your government puts you first. When a country loses that social contract, it ceases to be a country anymore. This is the conversation we need to be having in America, folks. I, for one, and I know I speak for all of you when I say this, am not interested in turning America into nothing more than Hillary Clinton's personal bank account. I'm not interested in having the United States become Hillary Clinton's personal wealth management fund. I'm interested, and you're interested, and we're all interested in having a country that is about enriching you, that is about protecting you, that is about taking care of you and the people that you love. 
That's what a country's all about. Each of us as American citizens taking care of each other and loving each other and supporting each other and standing up for our principles and our values. And that includes not bringing people into our country, as Mr. Trump has said, who don't share our values. How does it help America or lift up America or support America to bring anyone into this country, wherever they may come from, who rejects our values, who rejects our tolerant way of living, and who in fact has hatred in their heart for our people? How is that good for America? How is that good for our people? It's not. Hillary Clinton is a career criminal, folks. All you have to do, all you have to do, all you have to do is read the book Clinton Cash. Man, it'll turn your hair white. Let me tell you something. One corrupt deal after another, including, by the way, selling 20% of U.S. uranium assets to Russia, while Russia is funneling tens upon tens of millions of dollars to the Bill and Hillary Foundation. Sweet, sweet deals for countries like Saudi Arabia and China while they're giving money to, you guessed it, Bill and Hillary Clinton. Give money to Bill, get favors from Hill. The corruption of Hillary Clinton, the corruption of Hillary Clinton would make many, many, many crime syndicates very envious. The sophistication, the scale, the scope, the dollars involved, we are talking tens upon tens upon tens of millions of dollars. The amount of money that Bill and Hillary have made while pushing deals and pushing policies that have cut out millions of Americans from the workforce, that have driven down wages and jeopardized our national security, is shocking, appalling, and abhorrent. If this election is a referendum on morality, Hillary Clinton loses and she loses badly. If this election is a referendum on decency, Hillary Clinton loses and loses badly. If this election is an election about corruption and integrity, Hillary Clinton will lose and she will lose by historic margins. And I challenge the media to ask Bill and Hillary Clinton about the money they've taken from Brunei, to ask Bill and Hillary about the money they've taken from Russia, to ask Bill and Hillary about their operations in Haiti, to ask Bill and Hillary about the money they've taken from China, the money they've taken from Qatar, the money they've taken from all across the world, to ask Bill and Hillary about the many times State Department business was being conducted while Bill was taking money from the very people under State Department review. These are the things that the media needs to be looking into and needs to be looking into them now. Now, there's also some other issues in this election. I'll run through them quickly. There's the issue of jobs, folks. Hillary Clinton supported NAFTA. She supported TPP. She supported the Korea deal. As Bernie Sanders says, Hillary Clinton has supported every trade deal that's destroyed our jobs. Do we want to vote for someone who's going to send all of our jobs overseas? Or do we want to vote for a man who's going to put jobs and wages for American workers first? Do we want to vote for a man who's going to put American families first? Do we want to vote for a man who can't be bought and sold, who can't be, who can't be corrupted by special interests, and who will fight for you and you alone? I think it's time that you had a champion in your corner. I think it's time you turned on the TV and saw somebody fighting as hard for you as the other side fights for the special interests. I think it's time you had somebody in your corner protecting your interests and protecting your values. I think it's time you had somebody who is prepared to kick every last corrupt special interest out of Washington, D.C. And, and let's just run through a couple more things. Donald J. Trump is going to create millions of energy jobs. Hillary Clinton is going to shut down energy all across this country. Donald J. Trump is going to pass tax reform to create millions of private sector good-paying jobs. Hillary Clinton is going to raise our taxes and send even more jobs overseas. Donald Trump is going to get rid of regulations destroying our economy. Hillary Clinton is going to regulate companies out of existence except for the companies lining her pockets. On every issue that matters to working people, trade, immigration, energy, taxes, regulation. Hillary Clinton is against the working people of this country. Are you prepared to cast a vote on behalf of working people and stand with Donald Trump? Are you prepared to cast a vote on behalf of secure borders and vote for Donald Trump? 
are you prepared to send a message that will echo down through the annals of history that at this moment in America, we took back our country for the working people? And are you prepared, are you prepared to renew the social contract that says your value is not measured by how much money you make or how many dollars you contribute, but your value is measured by your worth as an American citizen? Folks, this opportunity, as I said at the beginning of my remarks, isn't going to come again. It is rare, it is special, it is unique. And it's incumbent upon all of us to find that last extra measure of devotion and dedication and courage on behalf of our children and their children and their children after to say at this crossroads, at this moment of corruption, at this time of special interest control, with thousands of people suffering every day because of our open border, millions of people suffering every day because of uncontrolled immigration, tens of millions of people losing their jobs and futures. At this moment, at this precipice, at this fork in the road, each and every one of you gave that last extra inch of dedication to return this country to the people sitting in this room today and all across this nation who are the true true leaders of America. It's not the politicians, folks. You are not ruled by anybody. You're not controlled by anybody. Let this be remembered as the year that we return control of the American people to its rightful rulers. We return control of this nation to its rightful rulers, the American citizens. And so you'll be hearing from Donald Trump in a moment. You'll be hearing from the man who's going to do that for you and so much more. You're going to be hearing from the man who's going to make you so proud and so thrilled and the man who's going to secure that border and bring back our jobs and protect us from terrorism. And so the question I have for all of you, and I want you to shout so loud that everyone who betrayed you, everyone who let you down, everybody who betrayed families like the Kate Steinle family, Everybody who betrayed families like the Carrier families in Indianapolis. Everybody who ignored your cries and pleas for help. I want you to shout so loud that it quivers the conference tables in Washington, D.C. Are you prepared, folks, to elect as president a man who will put America first, last, and always? Are you prepared to elect Donald J. Trump as President of these United States? Are you prepared to take back your country? Are you prepared for real change on behalf of America? God bless all of you. God bless this state. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you.
rally, if you can bear with us, if you try to accommodate all of our supporters, the rally will begin shortly. Thank you very much. I love this state. And if you ever need a room, I have a very nice building right down the street. You know? Hey, and I have to thank Mr. and Mrs. Phil Ruffin. The room is great. We've got people in every room he's got over here. His restaurants now are full. This is what took so long. And the worst thing we can do, folks, because we're all together, right? This is a movement. The worst thing we can do is start a rally, because if there's one empty seat, the press will say, oh, the room didn't fill up. Trump is into it. Outside, you have thousands of people trying to get in. And I hate to say it because I like them and they work very hard. TSA lets them in. And it's not working out so good. I'm not happy about it, but I have to put up with it. But they have, you know, the machines. And they didn't bring enough machines. And I don't know if the great Wayne Newton has that problem when he performs, but I love Wayne. I'll talk about Wayne in a second. But uh, we have to be very careful of that, because let's say I came out 10 or 15 minutes ago. Even though there are thousands of people outside, all of the conference rooms have people. They have closed circuit television. The whole hotel is packed. Phil, you've never had anything like this, and he owns it. So... If I had like three empty seats, they'd say, oh, this is terrible. And they are still piling into this room, but I think it's time we begin. Do we agree? Do we agree? Okay? So we have amazing people here, amazing friends are here, and it's been going really well. Uh, you know, I read about, there's an insurgent group. You know, the same group that I beat is insurgent. There are a couple of guys, they're trying to go to Cleveland, they're trying to get delegates. I thought they already tried that. I mean, I could give you names, but I won't because it's meaningless. First of all, it's illegal. Second of all, you can't do it. Third of all, we, not me, we got 14, almost 14 million votes. 14 million votes in the primary system. So that's more votes than ever received in the primaries in the history of the Republican Party. Okay, thank you. We beat a lot of people, 16 people. There were a total of 17, including myself. One after another, boom, boom, boom. It was a beautiful thing to behold, okay? A beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's great. Just keep filling them in. That's right. Isn't it better that we're starting now? We have to. They're not happy outside, but what the heck are we going to do? So it was a beautiful thing to behold. But think of this. So we got almost 14 million votes. We won 36, 37 states, which is, um, others won none. People that won none are saying, maybe we can get something at the convention. Doesn't work that way, folks. You would have, because we have, you know, one of the things the polls say, we have by far the most loyal followers, right? By far, by far. You know, other of the candidates, well, I mean, take a look at this today. They've never had anything like this, where every room is full, every conference room, every restaurant is loaded with people. I with hope people. you put closed circuit in, Phil. I They're going to be so angry, but I think Phil. They're going to be so angry, but I think you did. This guy doesn't hold back, believe me. But, so when we get 37 states, when we get 37 states, uh, we love our police. We love our police. Thank you. Thank you, officers. Thank you.
Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. By the way, how great are our police, okay? They don't get enough credit. They don't get enough credit. They don't. They take abuse. They don't get the credit they deserve, believe me. So we won 37 states. We won 14 million. We beat Ronald Reagan, who we love. We beat Richard Nixon. We beat Dwight D. Eisenhower. We beat everybody. We beat Bush. We beat the Bushes. We beat the Bushes. And by a lot, I don't mean we like edged it. I don't mean like, you know, I mean by a lot. And now you have a couple of guys that were badly defeated and they're trying to organize maybe like a little bit of a delegate revolt, maybe. Now, number one, you know, Reince Previous, you know what that is, right? RNC, no, he's a good guy. And the Republican National Committee, they put out a statement, you can't do it, it's not legal, you can't do it, you're not allowed to do it. How would you like to have a party where we started off with 17 or 18 people, actually, including somebody that I won't mention because I'm not looking to embarrass anybody, but it's actually 18 if you want to include somebody, okay? <laughs> but how would you like to have a party, Wayne? And he's married to a great lawyer, so she understands this better than Wayne does. But Wayne has a much better voice, right? But how would you like to have a party where myself and others traveled the country and worked for a long time? Now, it was shorter than I thought, because remember, I was supposed to maybe be able to pull it out at the convention, and we pulled it out two months before the convention. Do you remember? Do you remember when they said, 1237, that's the delegates, 1230, he cannot reach that number, he cannot reach that number. And I kept saying, what's the big deal? And one of the people, who probably hasn't quite given up yet, one of the people <laughs> was trying to buy up all of the second ballot people, right? And I kept saying, let them have them, because it's expensive to get them. And by the way, I spent less money than any other candidate and I ended up in first place, and they ended up, boom. So now I hear, after beating them fair and square, I mean, I beat them fair and square, actually a couple of the commentators that are negative people, actually, because most of them are, but a couple of the commentators that are negative people said, whether you like him or you don't, he beat them fair and square. And, and then they said, he didn't beat them by a little bit. He beat them by a lot. We beat them by a lot. Right? So how would you like to have a party where somebody goes out and beats them by a lot and wins not only the vote, largest in the history of the party, not only wins 37 states and nobody else was even, you know, like remotely close. I mean, some of these guys have none. How would you like to have that? A guy sets an all-time record gets almost 14 million votes over a period of like nine months. He gets 37 states. He gets tremendous support. He has sold out arenas no matter where he goes. Yesterday in, in Houston, people said they have never seen crowds like that. One of the reporters, a very good reporter actually from NBC, Haley, she just said, but are your crowds as big as they used to be? I said, they're bigger. They're bigger, they're actually bigger. No, they're bigger. You had to see Houston, Texas last night. We were in a big arena, held about 5,000 people. That's not a big one for us, but that was the biggest one we could get on short notice. And on short notice, we had a line that went five abreast forever. And it's the biggest subject in all of Texas. They had helicopters over. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. They've never seen anything like it. And our crowds are bigger. Our enthusiasm is more. A poll came out, OAN, a very good poll. Very, he's actually, they've, it's a very good group of people. A poll, OAN came out, where I'm um, statistically even with Crooked Hillary, and she is crooked, folks. Believe me, she is crooked. <laughs> Hillary Clinton doesn't have, I'll tell you what, Hillary Clinton, and you can say it any way you want, but she doesn't have the integrity she doesn't have the integrity 
to be president, and perhaps equally important, she's got very, very bad judgment. You just look at what she's done. You just look, okay. So how would you like to be in a party where Trump wins, where Trump keeps winning, where Trump has the biggest crowds, where Trump gets, by the way, the highest ratings in the history of television, they had a story in Variety. I don't like to brag, but we have to brag every once in a while, right? They had a story in Variety where a big headline, a big massive headline, and the story was that Trump makes massive profits for cable networks, and networks, but massive. And then it went on to say that they're setting records in viewership, they're setting records in advertising, they're making a fortune. What are we getting out of? We get nothing but maybe, but maybe we're going to get the presidency and we're going to straighten out our country, okay? We're going to straighten out our country. And we'll have Wayne at that inaugural ball. Wayne will be with me, Wayne. Ba, ba, ba. So, so there's a little movement, and, and I just heard today where it's coming from. It's coming from co people that have been badly defeated. But wouldn't that be funny? Okay. A guy got much less votes. He got no states. Ladies and gentlemen, our nominee is... <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, forget about the legality, because it's not legal. Forget about the fact that the Republican National Committee put out a statement last night saying, it's all made up by the press, folks, believe me, by these people right here. It's all made up by the press, okay? It's all made up, it's, it's, it's a hoax, I'm telling you. These are the most dishonest people, not all of them, not all of them, but these are, this is a story, I watched CNN yesterday, knowing it can't happen, breaking news, there will be this and that at the convention. Who are they gonna pick? I, I, beat everybody. But I don't mean beat, I beat the hell out of them. Right? Beat the hell out of them. And we're gonna beat Hillary. And it would be helpful if the Republicans could help us a little bit, you know, okay? Just a little bit. I mean, I have people that are so, that I've done so much for, that frankly we've done a great job for, all of us. You know, the Republican Party has increased the voter turnout. For the, forget about me. I set the all-time record. Guess what? The Republican Party in the primaries has, is up 70%, right? I think it's even more. 70, 70% 70 from four years ago. 70% more people have voted in the primaries. Is it because of me? Stand up, say it. A woman. I'm doing well with woman. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Believe me, I respect women more than Hillary respects women. I can tell you that. Thank you. They're screaming, it's because of you, Mr. Trump. It's because of you. And you know what? I never brag. They happen to be 100% right. All right. We, you take a look at these states. A couple of the states were up 102% from last year, okay, from four years ago. 102%, it's unheard of. In the whole world, people talk about it. I mean, some people would have said the Republican Party has stayed. It's not bad, it's stayed. It's, you know, it's got a little boring, maybe. And maybe the ideas weren't right, because I don't believe in the, let it be boring if the ideas are right. But the ideas weren't right. There wasn't strength on the border. Our budgets are way out of whack. Look at this last budget that we approved, the omnibus budget. You know, Obama is a horrible negotiator. Iran, Iran beats him. Every country beats him. He draws the line in the sand. They beat him. Everybody beats him. But he's a great negotiator when he has to negotiate against the Republicans. And we got to stop. We got to stop. We got to stop. They have to focus on budgets, not focus on me. And they view me as an outsider. I have to tell you a little secret. I shouldn't say it. You'll, half of you will leave the room. Should I say it? I used to be the ultimate establishment person. I was a massive giver. 
I gave a lot of money to everybody. I even gave to Democrats. I mean, I'm in business, right? I gave to Democrats, I gave to Republicans, but I gave a lot of money. The RGA, Republican Governors Association, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I was like establishment. And then one day I said, you know, I'm going to run. And I announced. And they said, what happened? That's no good. Because I'm not one of them. Because I'm going to do the right thing. I don't need this, folks. I don't need this. I don't need this. Phil Ruffin told me this morning, came over, we met, and he's done such an amazing job with this hotel. And his wife is actually much more amazing than him. Alexandra, stand up, please. Stand up. She's more amazing than Phil. Mr. and Mrs. Phil Ruffin. And he told me this morning, he said, and he was talking to a group of people, and we're raising money for the Republican Party. And frankly, I like doing it. I went around yesterday, I think, between yesterday and today, we raised 12 or 13 million dollars for the Republican Party. It's good. For the Republican Party. And somebody said, well, you're not raising money for... I said, I don't know. You know, I get people, I'm raising money for the Republican Party, and I'm not getting the kind of support. What they don't tell you, though, is I actually have a lot of support. But they don't talk to the people that support. Wayne Issa, who's a great guy, congressman, so many of the Republicans are so supportive, they don't want to talk about them. If somebody says something just a little bit off, headline, blaring news, breaking news, you know, they use the breaking news every time there's an event, there's breaking news. Then when you have a real breaking news event, nobody takes it seriously. You ever done? Breaking news! Uh, Donald Trump got up today and tweeted, good morning. <laughs> crazy. It's crazy. But they don't talk about that. But I will say, Phil said to me this morning, and he said to a group, he said, you know, Donald Trump didn't need to do this. He's made a fortune. He's done a great job, has a great family, an unbelievable, Phil, do I have an unbelievable business? Stand up, please. This guy knows better than I. Stand up. Stand up. Did I do a good job? Um, built an unbelievable business. And I built an unbelievable business, a great, great business, some of the greatest assets in the world, no matter where. Who's that guy? Is he a friend or foe? All right, get him out of here, please. Get him out. Get him out. Yeah, get him out. Yo, could, let, could you let somebody else take his place, please? Different, right? Ah, uh, thank you very much. These are like love fests. You know, a friend of mine came over to me, and he said, very rich guy, very, su a very successful guy. Not a great guy, but who cares about that? We need these people to help us negotiate with China and with other countries. Right? But he's a guy that is very successful. And he was at an arena where I had 21,000 people. And I was speaking. And he said, and he's got a lot of guts, financial guts, I call it. You know, different kind of guts. Like, I have financial guts. When I see what our great military people do, I don't know that I'd have those kind of guts, right? Right? These people are fantastic. We've got to take care of our military, take care of our vets. We have to replenish our military, and we have to knock the hell out of ISIS. Have to knock the hell out of ISIS. But, but he came up to me, and he was with me at this arena, and he saw it was in Dallas, and 21,000 people, the Mavericks Arena, packed including the whole floor. And he said, could I ask you a question? How long have you prepared for this speech? How the hell do you get out there in front of that many people? I said, that's nothing, because all the networks are covering it live, just like they are right now. He said, how do you do it? Thank you, darling. You're right. She gets it. You're right. And I said, honestly, and he said, how do you do this? He said, she, she understands. But he said, how do you do this? How do you speak in front of that many people. He said he could never do it. I said, it's not hard because I'm telling you, there is such love in this room. There is such love in this room. I really mean it. I really, really mean it. There is such love in these arenas. We had in Mobile, Alabama, we had 35,000 people. We started in a hotel ballroom. After about an hour, the hotel call said, we can't handle it. 
We then moved to the convention center. That holds 10,000 people. They told us after two hours they can't handle it. We moved to a football stadium in Mobile. We had the most unbelievable time. We had 35,000 people. In Oklahoma, we have these massive crowds. We have massive crowds everywhere. And it's so easy to do what I'm doing because it's love. It really is love. I'm doing it for love. I'm doing it for this country. I want to... We are so off track. We are so off track. So... And I'll tell you something, the safest place, thank you, darling, the safest place to be in this country is at a Trump rally. Remember that. <laughs> Remember that. It's the safest place to be. Oh, good. All the seats have now filled out. And there's still, they just said there's 3,000 people outside. All the seats are now filled out. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The press, if I had, I'm telling you, we had to do that. That's why I waited. Are you, is it okay that I waited? Yes. Okay, now they're all filled out. Filled out all over this building. I don't know. This guy Ruffin must be making a fortune this morning. I don't know. So, the safest place to be, seriously. And our whole theme is make America great again. But I've... I've revised it. It's make America great again. It's make America safe again. Safe again. It's make America safe again. And it's also, we want to do it for everybody, not just us. We want to do it for everybody. We want to help African-Americans who are, you look at African-American, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, man. African-American youth has a 59% rate of unemployment. Okay, folks, 59. And we're letting people pour into our country. We have no idea who the hell they are, where they come from. There's no documentation. There's no paper. They come from hostile countries. They, came, they come from, it's not guns. You know, I saw the president talk immediately about guns. It's not guns. It's terrorism. It's terrorism. It's not guns. It's terrorism. And I watched him the other day, and he was, and, and by the way, this wasn't just me saying it. He was more angry at Donald Trump than he was at the shooter, the maniac who killed all of those young people. He was more angry at Donald Trump and I wasn't the only one to say it. Plenty of people saw it than he was at the shooter. So... We got to change our mindset here, folks. We have to be really tough, really smart, really strong. You know, in the past, we'd have a war. And we'd be fighting Japan. And they had uniforms. We knew who we were fighting. And we'd be fighting Germany. And we'd be fighting others. And we knew who our opponent was. We knew who the enemy was. Today, you don't know who the hell it is. And you are going to have... You are going to have problems the likes of which you've never seen unless Donald Trump becomes your president. <laughs> Believe me. Believe me. Thank you. Now, we're going to bring jobs into our country, and that's going to solve a lot of problems. It's amazing how jobs can solve a lot of problems. Problems that we think we have, all of a sudden somebody gets a good job, and you don't have the problems. But we're having our jobs ripped off and being sent to other countries, ripped off by currency manipulation, where they're lowering the value of their currency, and they're making it impossible for our companies to compete. We're being ripped off at every level, and we have leaders that are so stupid, they have no idea what's happening. I mean, look at the newspapers today. Apple. Good old Apple. I was waiting for this to happen. They've been having their stuff made in China, and now China has turned against them. Now, here's the bad news. By my saying that, China's very smart. They're going to say, oh, boy, Trump's picked up this one. We'll let Apple. I am doing such a service to Apple by even mentioning it. Because our word is being broadcast all over the world. 
And Tim Cook should send us a lot of money for what I'm doing. But China is now ripping off Apple, saying you don't have the right to sell a certain product in China because somebody else has the right. And they're ripping them off Big League. And right now, Apple doesn't know what to do. But it always happens. But you watch. Because of this, this will be a headline. Now China, they're smart. I deal with them. They're very smart. You can do great with them. I made a lot of money with China. The biggest bank in the world is my tenants. I sell condos like crazy to people from China. The Bank of America building in San Francisco, indirectly through China. I mean, so much, so much stuff. I did great with China. And I have great respect for China. I'm not knocking China. And I'm not knocking Mexico. And I'm not knocking Japan. I'm not knocking anybody. I think it's great what they do for themselves. But I am knocking our leadership as being grossly incompetent. They don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. And every time, and, and in all fairness, China is just one of many, but China's the biggest and it's the biggest abuser. China's an abuser. They abuse our country. Every time they start doing badly, do you notice? They knock out their, their currency a little bit lower, a little bit lower. They're not supposed to be doing that. That's sort of like cheating, you know? It's a way of cheating. Now, we do it very little because we don't know how to play. They're like grandmasters. They're like grandmasters, and we're like checker players that don't know how to play. That's, no, that's the difference. But it won't be that way. Carl Icahn, guys like Ruffin, guys like so many of my people that have backed me, so many of the people that Phil knows. These are the best business people in the world. These are the best negotiators in the world. These are the best negotiators in the world. And you know what? You know what? It's very interesting. We're going to put it up. I'm the best. Oh, I'm good. good. But we have the best. We have the greatest business people. We have the greatest negotiators in the world. You know, we have the greatest. Andy Beal, who's a big supporter. Andy Beal, Beal Bank in Texas. We have such unbelievable people that are supporting me. And they support me, not because they like me, although I guess that's a part of it, but they're supporting me because they hear me. You ever hear corporate inversion? We have companies that are leaving this country. Taxes are too high. And they have trillions of dollars outside of our country. They can't get it back. We can't get it back because we have no leader. You know, we have trillions of dollars right now outside of our country. I think it's five trillion. They say it's two and a half trillion. I think it's much more. We can't bring it back. The Democrats want to bring it back. The Republicans want to bring it back. Everybody, who the hell doesn't want to bring it back? It's money that we aren't allowing to come back in. Because the bureaucracy, it's actually not just taxes. The taxes are crazy. Only a maniac would bring it back and pay those. It's crazy, too high. high we pay the highest taxes in the world. By the way, I have the biggest tax decrease of any candidate that's run for office and that's close to 20 people and hillary clinton has the biggest tax increase and she doesn't even want to talk about it in my opinion her taxes have to be close to 60 percent to pay for what she's talking about and she got forced into a corner by crazy bernie one thing about bernie he doesn't give up this guy doesn't give up right Crazy Bernie, he doesn't give up. You know. Crazy Bernie, he's crazy as a bed bug, but you know, he doesn't quit. He doesn't quit. You gotta hand it to him. And I think Bernie should continue to go forward, folks. He should continue to go forward. He should fight to the last end. Well, he's waiting for really the FBI to do what everybody thinks they're going to do. I mean, I think that's... Uh, I think he's sort of saying, look, oh, let's hang in there, because ultimately it's called the FBI convention. <laughs> and then we'll be the only people and we will have done something like Trump did. I want to be like Trump. I want to be like Trump. <laughs> but I think he's waiting for the FBI convention. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if the right thing happens. Everybody knows what the right thing is. I've watched and read and seen and talked to great legal scholars. Not one has said that she should be allowed to run for office. Every person that we know of 
that's done far less than what she's done. Their lives have been destroyed. And the press doesn't cover it because the press is so one-sided. CNN, as an example, it's called the Clinton News Network. Clinton News Network. No, it's a joke. It's a joke. The Clinton News Network. So we'll see what happens. But Bernie is in there, and Bernie's fighting, and I don't think he should give up. Does anybody think so? I don't think so. If he gives up, we'll say, Bernie, you're a loser. You gave up. We can't do it. No, but we'll see. I mean, he's got to have something in mind, and I personally think that's maybe what he has in mind. So we're going to do things for our country that are going to be amazing. And they've resonated, look, one year from Thursday, I ran. And everybody said, June 16th, one year. So it's one year and two days now. One year. One year. And a lot of people said, I watched Carl Rove. He said, oh, he's not going to run. Oh, go ahead. I watched Krauthammer. No, he won't run. Krauthammer said, he won't run. He, uh, he won't run because this is the single greatest group of talent, perhaps in the history of the Republican Party. In fact, a month before, I said to my wife, wow, I just don't forget, Krauthammer wanted us to go into Iraq and bomb the hell. We've done a great job by doing that. And I was against doing that, folks. I was against it. These guys all wanted to bomb the hell out of Iraq. We've done a great job in doing that. We've totally destabilized the Middle East. What a mess we have, okay? What a total mess we have. And by the way, who takes over Iraq? Iran. Not only do they make the Iran deal. I used to say that's the greatest deal I've seen. They got $150 billion back. They have the right to go wild with nuclear weapons eventually. They don't need to make them. They can buy them. But you know what? They make great. Now, I used to say that's one of the greatest deals I've ever seen. I don't say that anymore. Greatest deal is that for years and years and years, decades and decades, they fought each other. And one went 10 feet this way, 10 feet that way, 10 feet, three, four years. Then they rested. Then they go again, again, again. Saddam Hussein drops a little gas. Iran complains. You're not supposed to do that. The world goes crazy. And then they rest. Then again. Okay, this has gone on forever. Then we come in and obliterate one of the two. Obliterated. And now what have we done? We have given Iran Iraq. Okay? As sure as you're sitting there, I've been saying this for a long time, but Iran is essentially controlling Iraq. Iran is now, very shortly, going to just walk in. They don't have to fire a shot. And the people running Iraq are so in the pocket of Iran. And why wouldn't they be? Because they figure we're gone. You know, we're gone. So Iran is going to take over Iraq. A lot of people don't know that Iraq has some of the largest oil reserves in the entire world. A lot of people don't know that. So look what's happening. Look what's happening to Iran. Look what we've done by sheer stupidity. So a lot of these people, they said, bomb, bomb, bomb. And I said, although I, what did I know? I was in business, right? I didn't know. A lot of people weren't asking me. But I said, if you do that, you're going to destabilize the Middle East. And hence, you have the migration. And hence, you have people going all over the world. Look at the problems in Germany. Look at the crime. I have friends in Germany that for years would say, the greatest country, the greatest country. They love Germany. Now they're saying, we're leaving. They were leaving Germany. Look what they've done to different... Look at Brussels. How beautiful a place was Brussels. And look at what's going on. Look at Paris. Look what's happening in Paris. And it's far worse than you people understand. It's far worse than people understand. In fact, today there was actually a story that Paris is so, so, so out of control, so dangerous. Look at what's going on. And we have Hillary Clinton wanting to take in over 500% more than Obama. No, think of it. Than Obama of people that will cause us problems like you will not believe. Not all of them, but look what one man did. One whack job. He's a wacko. Look what one whack job did. One radical Islamic terrorist. And he pledged himself to ISIS. Here's a guy, he's shooting people and pledging himself to ISIS as he's shooting. Okay? He's calling people and talking about ISIS, ISIS. Look what one man has done to this country. Look at what one man has done to the state, to the great, great, great state of Florida that I love, and Orlando, amazing place. 
This is one man. We're letting in millions of people. It doesn't take large amounts. This could be the great Trojan horse. We all know the story of the Trojan horse. But this could be the great story of the Trojan horse. All because we have leadership and weak people like Hillary. She's weak. She's weak. She, Bernie Sanders said about Hillary Clinton that she can't be president because she has bad judgment. Okay, he said it. I didn't say it. I would never say a thing like that. <laughs> and then I hear her, I hear her saying, you know, reading right off, always teleprompters. She goes, Donald Trump does not have the temperament to be president. And then the, you know, the, the people back, oh, she gave a great speech. I'll oh, give me a break. <laughs> gave a great speech. You think she's the president? Take a look at her. You think she's the president? I don't think so. I don't think <laughs> Donald Trump doesn't have the temperament. And I'll tell you something. I started thinking about it. And I was going to say, I absolutely have a great temperament. And I've done great things. Hey, look, I went into television, had The Apprentice. Great hit. One of the most successful reality shows, right? I did books. Many bestsellers, many. The Art of the Deal is one of the biggest selling, certainly the biggest selling business book of all time, by far. So I did books, tremendous success. Real estate, I have some of the greatest assets in the world. You look at my numbers, very low debt, tremendous everything, okay? I filed over a hundred and some odd pages. But listen to this, okay, so listen. So we have, we have a great study in contrasts. So I started thinking about temperament, and I was going to say, I do have a good temperament, I do. And then I said to myself, well, wait a minute. She's probably right about one thing. I have a very tough temperament. She said, you know, but very controlled. But we need tough temperament today. We can't have this weakness. We can't have weakness. My temperament's tough. My temperament is very solid. I don't lose control. I've been doing this for a long time, folks. You've been watching me for a long time. Do you know in New York, I won in a massive landslide. Who knows me better than the people of New York? Nobody knows me better. Nobody. I won in a massive landslide and we had three people. Now New York knows me better. I've been there for a long time. If I didn't have a good temperament, I couldn't have won New York. They know me, I would, oh, do I get publicity? Do I get, they write about me every day, every hour. It's always been this way, I don't know why. I don't know why they had their debate. So Fox in the debate had 24 million people. It's actually even more than that, but 24 million people. The largest audience in the history of cable television. Now, I don't think it was for Jeb, but maybe I'm wrong, okay? <laughs> By the way, Jeb is working on the movement, just so you understand. I love competition like that. I love it. So, so look, look. Low energy. I didn't say it, you did. Okay. No, Jeb is one of the people that's working. And the other one should be obvious to you, but we'll figure that out very easily. Okay, ready? So, so when you look and when you see, and when you see what we have to do, we have to get out there. We have 24 million people they watch. We have 23. The next two weeks, CNN puts on a debate. 23 million people. The largest audience in the history of cable television for CNN. His CNN covers wars, covers everything, right? So you have the largest audience in the history of cable television, and then a few weeks later, oh yeah, they do say the debate with Hillary will be, it's gonna blow everything away. Oh, I look forward to that debate. Oh, do I look forward to that debate. I look so forward to that debate. But, but think of this, so CNN, a few weeks later, has another debate. And they get the largest audience they've ever had in the history of CNN. You know, it's pretty impressive, right? And Variety and the magazine say, the Trump debate drew record ratings. Okay, just like they said, the prophets. But here's the thing about the debate. So the debates go on, and a lot of people say, what was the biggest surprise? Well, I didn't know myself as a debater, because I never debated. I create jobs, I do deals, I do business, I do this stuff, right? I don't debate. I guess my life is a debate, but I don't debate professionally. And I hear all these politicians, they're debaters. We debate. Hillary Clinton supposedly is a debater. Give me a break. <laughs> Will she be allowed to bring the teleprompter onto the debate stage? <laughs> so, so, so what happens is we start the debates, and I never did it before. And I'm saying, but think of that. I was in 11 debates, and of the 11 debates, I think it was 11, of the 11 debates, 
I was on center stage for every single debate, meaning you're number one. And of, and of the 11 debates, of the 11 debates, Drudge, fantastic guy, Time Magazine, Slate, they do polls. I, I think I really help the polling business, right? I talk about polls, I like polls. But only if I'm winning, I don't like them otherwise. <laughs> and we're starting to catch up very rapidly, so pretty soon. The polling companies are gonna have their day in the sun pretty soon, I think. But here's the story. So of, the, of all of these debates, I think the seven of them they cover, they have online polls. Hundreds of thousands of people vote. And on every single debate, by every single poll, I won every debate, which is pretty good, which is pretty good. You know, I don't know, I think it's pretty good. But we are going to do things that are gonna be great. And a lot of people don't want me in because they don't wanna see strong borders, okay? They don't wanna see strong, I wanna see strong borders. They don't wanna see me job creating. They don't want to see what I'm going to do to help the minorities because we have problems in this country. We, I will do more for African Americans than Barack Obama has ever, ever, ever done. And believe me, he's done nothing. He's done nothing. He's done nothing but talk. He's done nothing but talk. And the Hispanics. So I employ thousands of Hispanics. Thank you. Where's Miriam? Where is Miriam? Where is she? Thank you. No, I employ thousands of Hispanics. Where's Miriam? She's shy. She doesn't want to. She has been so amazing. Where is she? Thank you. Thank you. She goes around and says Donald Trump is going to do more for Mexicans and Hispanics. And, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, darling. So nice. Now she's been amazing and she, uh, she knows because I'm gonna bring our jobs back, folks. We're bringing our jobs back. Look at Carrier. They fired everybody. They're moving to Mexico. So many companies moving to Mexico. I mean, I have a list that's a mile long. They're moving to Mexico, firing everybody. Then they make the product, not only in Mexico, they make the product. They sell it into the United States, no tax, no nothing. And you know what happens? We're gonna lose a lot more companies, folks. We're gonna lose a lot more companies. If I'm president, we're not gonna lose anything. We're not gonna lose any companies. We're not gonna lose, and I say that strongly. Because you know what? These guys don't know. I've been watching this discussion because for seven or eight years, we have been just, it's been an onslaught. And longer than that, in all fairness to Obama, long before Obama, it was called NAFTA. It was signed by Bill Clinton. And it didn't affect Bill Clinton, but it affected everybody that followed Bill Clinton. And believe me, folks, it has been a disaster for this country. When I won New York State and Pennsylvania, when I won Maryland and Connecticut and Rhode Island, and when I won all of these states, and then won Indiana, thank you, Bobby Knight. Boy, did Bobby Knight help. Boy, did Bobby Knight. That was a coach night, 900 wins. But when I won all of these states, I really got to know, even New York State, I knew it well. I knew there were tremendous problems upstate New York, but I had no idea. When I toured those upstate areas of Albany and Rome, the real Rome, Rome, New York, okay, that's I call that the real Rome. <laughs> but, but Syracuse, and you see building after building after building, empty, falling down, just a horrible sight all over. You could buy them, folks, you could buy them for a dollar. And you know what, I'll give you, maybe some real estate advice. Go out and buy them, and if I win, you're gonna make a hell of a lot of money, okay? In fact, Phil Ruffin will get up and leave before the speech is over. He's headed to upstate New York right now. No, but it's true. It's true. Building after, by the thousands, by the thousands. And I have statisticians that work for me. And before I used to speak when we were in the primary, I'd say, give me the information on upstate New York. Give me the information on Long Island. Give me the information on, on all of these different places, Pennsylvania in particular. Look at West Virginia, what they've done to our coal miners. They've destroyed. Hillary Clinton said, I'll put the coal miners and the mines out of business. That was not a smart statement. And then she had to go there four hours later. 
And look at the numbers I've gotten in West Virginia and Pennsylvania. But I look, because we're going to bring the coal industry back, and we're going to bring every industry. We're going to bring our energy industry back. We're going to bring it back. We're going to bring it back. You know, because of technology, folks, because of technology, we have learned things, frankly, and we realize that we have wealth that we never knew we had. Over the last six or seven years, there are many forms of technology that have given us an awareness that's unbelievable. What's happened is unbelievable. So we're going to bring all these things back, and we're going to start paying off our debt, and we're not going to let our companies... Now, here's what we're going to do. So Carrier says they're leaving. I would call them and say very nicely, and you know, my wife gives me a very hard time. She said, darling, you're president. You cannot call an air conditioning company. I said, that's okay.